Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 137. This episode is with Matthew Savage, who is a concept artist who's worked on some of the coolest stuff out there, and we talked about almost all of it. Uh, We talked about him being from Bristol originally and growing up drawing, how he went from making tea and coffee in the art department to measuring the tumbler for Batman Begins. What? I know. Uh, We talk about how he went from there to work on Doctor Who and what that was like having been such a huge fan of it beforehand. Uh, We talk about how cool it is to see his ideas being made into real space and how he works with the construction and prop people to make those things happen. To to be a concept artist is so cool. We talk about, yeah, he, he comes up with these ideas and then he works with people and then the fact that his ideas are then made real and how crazy of an experience that is. Matt is the coolest Uh, We talk about the many different things he's designed, from Ray's blaster to Leia's lightsaber to the bat cycle for the Dark Knight. Yeah, I know. I know. This is one dude that's worked on all these things. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, my friends. Matt also had some great advice about chasing your dreams, putting in the hard work, and much more. But hey, that's enough for me. Let's just get right into this. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, episode number 137 with Matthew Savage. Theme song time. I, I love talking to people who are like in Australia and New Zealand because I was like, you're on the other side of the planet. That's what the big that one, isn't like? it? That one is, that yeah. literally is tomorrow. They're, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That Doing the math for that is just, man, I was like, I don't know. I, I don't, I, hold on. Give me like an hour. I'll figure out our time differences because this is getting a little wonky here. I did a job where the director was in L.A., I was in the UK and we were talking to someone in Australia Oh no! and trying to find that, that window, that sweet spot. Yeah. Um, it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Things you've learned on the, on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was not, that was me at two o'clock in the morning, my time talking Ooh. to you. So, you know, lovely fresh daisies on the other side of the planet. <laughs> sure. <laughs> time is so weird. It makes no, it makes no sense. It's all, all. relative. <laughs> it is. It is. It. Do you do? Is daylight savings a thing in the UK? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're about to get our extra hour in the evening, so we're going to go yeah. back. Yeah. I like that one. That one I'm a big fan of. I I work nights, so whenever that happens, I go from late to on time. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in the spring, it's the opposite. It's like I swear I was on time. I was doing really good today, yeah, and I'm an yeah. hour late. Like, why, why do we keep doing this? What is I think happening? we even have that either this weekend or next weekend is pretty soon. Oh, man. That's, uh, I like that. That's a good time. That's well, a good time. We have kids, so it makes no difference to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bang, morning, let's go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Are they that age where they get up super early on their own? Uh, they're, they're not like, too bad. They're seven, they're, sorry, eight and five now. So we're, Okay, there you yeah, go. Yeah, it, it, we're... That's why I haven't done any podcasts or interviews the last eight years because I've just been. Yeah. <laughs> just don't you don't need to see or hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have children, but I did get a puppy this year, and that's like half the child. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe <laughs> maybe more from. I mean, we we used to have dogs, yeah, and no, they they can be, especially to begin with, their hard work. Yeah, that's sure. something I did not realize. My right. wife and I, we grew up with dogs, but like, you know, I totally took advantage of everything my parents were doing. I, yeah, we, we're <laughs> exactly the same. You you have no idea what your parents are doing until you become an adult. No, not wow, at all. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did you sleep? <laughs> like, we, we didn't, Brian. We didn't. I'm like, oh. Yeah. oh. You know those eight hours when you were down? We were yeah. working through those. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. So you're you're in London? No, no, I'm outside of London. I'm about an, uh, about an hour and a half from London. Oh, right on, right on. In, in Bristol, but I do I commute up to London for for work, or or I did 
um you know sure yeah <laughs> in the old times <laughs> yeah yeah so um so no I'm, I'm in bristol um i've been working from home throughout pretty much right on right on bristol i've not been to bristol i've been to chester and, oh, I've, yeah, been, yeah. and I've been to london oh, and, cool. and wales i i yeah. took the ferry from dublin to hollyhead and then a oh, train sure. from yeah. chester to london yeah yeah that's my goal that's what that was that was my path yeah, I, fell, nice. I fell asleep in a train station in Hollyhead and they thought I was homeless and they were not happy with it. Like, <laughs> get, 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 get. And I was like, all right, sorry, sorry. What's, did I miss my train? No, I didn't. Okay. Let's run. It was, yeah. it was an experience, but Bristol, really? are you, are you from Bristol? Yeah. Yeah. Born and bred. <laughs> right on. What's it like? Um, it's nice. It's, it's, it's small. Um, it's cosmopolitan. It's always had good music, a uh, good music scene. Oh, right on. Um, no, there's not a lot of film and TV, um, sure. but I mean, these days that doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, it's true. That's true. It's good. It's very cozy. And um, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quick to get up to London if I need to for a meeting or a job. There you um, go. There you yeah. go. That's cool. So yeah. were you, so then it, is there an art scene there? Or like, well, I'm, I'm interested because yeah, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, um, uh, do you know Ardman Animation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're based. They've been based here, you know, for oh. their entirety. Oh, right on. But, I mean, I say there's no film. They're they're here, and they're obviously a big Oscar winning. Uh, company. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my, but they're lovely. Favorite. They're really cool. I've worked for them um, before. Um, yeah, yeah. No, they're 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 nice. They're you know, it's a very creative city on the whole. There you go. That makes uh, that makes sense. That tracks being an artist yourself. I I love talking to artists as well to like wonder where like the interest started you know what i mean like was it something you doodled as a kid or something you got into later on like did, were, were you doing art growing up oh yeah i mean it was um i think i mean i was, I was as as kids do i was drawing before i yeah. could read or write um, that's cool i think drawing is still therapy to me it's always oh, cool. i don't know, i don't know why it's my comfort um yeah go to I don't know. It's methodical and cathartic. Sure. Um, so it, it 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 all stems from from that um, sort of drawing and a, a healthy diet of Star Wars, and yep. Doctor Who, and all the all the things that were just kind of you know in my periphery when I was when I was growing up. Sure, sure. That's cool. So then, were did you just do it like you're kind of self taught for a while before later on like. I, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of entirely self-taught in that right it, on. Um, I had a, a, a solidly mediocre education. <laughs> <laughs> I went to um, public school. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, I mean, art was never, it wasn't exactly frowned upon, but it, it was this kind of, you know, corner of the school, which. Sure. That's under, a hobby. Underfunded, <laughs> under-respected. Um, Always. Um, and so I was at school sort of 25 years ago and to say, you know, film work, concept art, it was, the teachers were, <sighs> I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Are you sure? <laughs> you know, it was, um, you yeah, know, frowned upon, but kind of just treated with, with skepticism, I guess. Sure. Sure. Like you, you know, you know how that works, right? It doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd go in with book, you know, the making of Alien, and the, you know, oh, the there you go. And say, you, you know, someone, <laughs> someone had, someone did this at some point. They sat down and, and drew. Yeah, uh, but those, those were the two sort of catalysts in terms of you know what I do now and what I did then. It was it was um, the media. I was exposed to and 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 drawing and <clears throat> for whatever reason those two things kind of came together quite um uh, quite neatly yeah there you go what what was your medium growing up what do you like to use uh pencils all the way oh, cool there you go <laughs> yeah. there you go well, uh, you know um digital art was kind of creeping in as i was heading towards graduation and mm -hmm. doing further education um I remember we, we, we had our first computer in the art, in, in my school art department with a mouse and a scanner. Oh. You know, 
uh, Microsoft go. Paint and all that. Sure, moving <laughs> on up. Very uh, cumbersome, but um, I, I've always been a traditional kind of pen and marker. Um, oh, I cool. love all, all that kind of stuff. Well, tactile, getting in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't, sadly, it doesn't really play a big part in some modern concept art be, mm -hmm. because it, it's kind of about turn around and 3d modeling and all, all those kind of modern um things but sure um, i still you know it's still drawing you know it's still that's the the therapeutic uh there you <laughs> part go. Of my day. yeah that's great it's especially for someone who's done it for so long and who's done it as a job because a lot of times once your love becomes a job it loses the magic so that's really cool to hear you still got it yeah i it's funny because i've always i've always done it as a hobby until mm -hmm. it was a job and then when i'm not working it's still a hobby there you go. Um, i don't i don't know why that part of my career hasn't become boring yet but it's still yeah. Still don't fun. jinx it, Matt. Come on. <laughs> there's time. I mean, there's jobs. Right there. yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's, not all, it's not all roses, but uh, yeah. <laughs> true, true. What was it always concept art then? Like, were you as an as an early kid was like, this is the thing? I yeah, I guess it was design. Um, I didn't really know the term concept art until I I did a work experience on a movie. Mm -hmm. um, after I graduated and um, I'd kind of drawn, you know, to the dark room where they were doing concepts. And I was like, ah, that's right. That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you do. Now I, now I can really try and um, there you go. get my career moving. But it, you found I, didn't, I didn't know the term. The term wasn't sort of commonplace until, I don't know, well, you know, 20, 15, 20 years ago, I guess. Sure, sure. Like, once you got the name, it's on. Yeah, I, I think it was cool. I mean, there's it used to be called production artwork, or mm -hmm. um, it, I guess it was just there wasn't as big a call for concept art thirty years ago. There were uh, now, now. There's so much content being generated with video games and movies and TV that it's sure it's just a you know and social media. It's um, definitely it's very very well known now. Sure. There you go. There you go. So when, when you're going to school for something and mm -hmm. then do you remember your first gig outside of school? Um, yeah, my, I mean, my first gig was making tea and coffee or, or yeah, <laughs> Perfect. First, first gig in the film industry or first gig. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do both tea and coffee. What's your go-to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know, I, I'm not the tea drinker, but I, I am schooled in making teas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> first day on my first movie, do it. It's kind of the British equivalent of an internship, I guess. It was. It's sure. we, we do work placement or work experience. Oh, cool. And so I turned up with my pencil case and you know my my sketchbook. Like, sure. T round. Draw. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, draw tea. I can draw tea. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a wax on wax off kind of situation where I bet you know you. I, it's, I mean, it's different for different people. Mine, I was just so keen to get onto a film that I, mm -hmm. um, with no experience, quite a weak, young portfolio. I, I kind of, I had to go and pay my dues and of course. Um, do teas and coffees. So I'm, you there you know, go, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. Pretty good with that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to hold a bunch at once? Was this um, like a waiter situation where you're like, all right, here we go. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we had a trolley, but I definitely did. Um, I mean, I, I made tea and coffee. Um, my second sort of proper gig after that was um, as a paid art department assistant, which is the, the entry nice. level into the art department. And that was on uh, Batman Begins. <sighs> what? And they had a massive art department of kind of 30 or 40 people. Oh, yeah. That, that was the tea round. It was like next level. <laughs> yeah, it's Batman. <laughs> but it, it, we, I got um, a couple of phone numbers. I was trying to, I was cold calling and they said, go and call these people. Um, I can't tell you what it's called, but it's called the, it's going under the title of the Intimidation Game. Ooh. So I thought, I don't know, what's that? Like a Cold War spy 
Sure. Yeah. I don't know. And I, I got the call and they said, yeah, yeah, um, it's, it's Batman. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Batman well, hadn't been cool for a while. It had been off the cinema screens for a couple of years. So it's quite a big, sure. Um, quite a big deal. But yeah, that was, that was great. That was, um, wow. Batman for your first like art gig. Dude. Yeah, well, I did. I, I mean, I did a bit of prop design. I was mainly, the art department assistant with a couple of, I mean, I was one of four art department assistants because it was such a big mm -hmm. movie. Um, but then you get to assist the art directors. Um, I remember my first day I had to go down and assist an art director measuring up the, the tumbler, the Batmobile. And I, what? it was, it was a horrible, like he was in Shefton, so it was rainy and cold. It was in the winter and I, <laughs> I moved away to a small B and B. And I had all those doubts and regrets the night before. And then on the first morning we were measuring up the car. I was like, well, okay, then <laughs> I, need, I, needed, I needed that today. I needed a, a sure. win. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you needed the other side of the coin to make it all right. Yeah. Wow. Measuring the Batmobile? Yeah, that was, that was it. That's where it all, all started. Dude. Is that is that common? Like you said, you do like prop design and stuff like that. Like, what's the what's the average job at that point? What are the, some of the stuff you're doing? Measuring um, the Batmobile. As an art department assistant, your which is the entry level job mm -hmm. in the UK, you are uh, making tea and coffee. You're assisting the art directors and the production designer. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're a, a sort of a go to helping hand to begin with, uh, but then. The payoff is you can say, what can I do? Can I do some prop design or can I do some technical drawing? Or um, you, kind of, you kind of balance it by making it worthwhile. You might stay late and, and do, I did some proppy bits and bops, bops on that movie just to. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it was, um, it was great. And you meet that job, you meet everyone because you, uh, you also issue the technical drawing. So when the art department um, who are drawing up the, the big sets and environments. Mm -hmm. They have sort of a stack of technical drawings that have to go to the carpenters, the electricians, oh, masters, yeah. uh, the DOP. Um, so you, in, in, the, in the morning, um, you might do a round and visit every department and give them their, their drawings. So it's a really good um, uh, sort of introduction and, and baptism into the film industry. Sure. Great networking. And yeah, you're, yeah, you're, exactly. you're like, you're in the pipeline. So it's a lot of like, they need to see you and you're like, all oh, right, I'm on the team yeah. too. Yeah. That's smart. That's a genius yeah, it, way to get into it. It's, it's great. I loved it. I, I only did it on one movie before sort of going on to do concept art, but it was, um, uh, it's great. You, you're absolutely shafted at the end of the day because you're moving. <laughs> I bet you got to earn it for sure. And I remember when they told me the hours, um, just coming from university and the, it was, um, it's kind of half seven, eight in the morning till sort of seven ish in the evening. Mm -hmm. Um, which it doesn't, I mean, now as a, a an exhausted dad of two, that doesn't, <laughs> but there's a sort of a, a lazier early twenty. Sure. <laughs> We stay here till seven. Yeah. What, what are we going to do until then? I'll be so tired. <laughs> and you are. You sleep. <laughs> that's part of it. That's how. That's how it goes. That's mm. that's the thing nobody tells you. Especially like uh, I'm an actor. So when you think about like, oh, it's I'm going to be an actor. It's going to be great. They don't tell you about the sixteen hour days on set. Sometimes you're like, oh, right. This is a job. It yeah, takes yeah. forever. <laughs> and they're peculiar days because it, it's kind of a friend of mine who works on sets. So it's like being in a war because you have 20 minutes of extreme stress mm -hmm. and then four hours of doing nothing. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's back up and down. Yep. Yep. It's so, and it's like a clock too. Cause it's like lights will get in there and do their thing. And then they're backing off while the actors get in there. It's like shifts of yeah, intensity. Yeah. It's bonkers. And then they all shout at the art department as yeah. well. <laughs> That's in there. There's time allotted for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I definitely have an art department bias. That's because they're, they're That's my okay. team. That's okay. That's your home. <laughs> you got you to rep the team, Matt. I get it. I understand. 
we get we do um i've done i've done i've very briefly worked as a standby art director um oh, there you go in tv and i did it once i thought that's not yeah not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know till you try it you know no that, well that i, I tried out because i tried out of uh someone else being ill it wasn't uh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> you're just feeling out of choice <laughs> You have so much respect for them afterwards. You're like, I don't know how you do it. I just, please don't get sick again. <laughs> All day from people. <laughs> oh my God. What you said you're designing props and environments and stuff like what for somebody that doesn't know, like myself, what is the job of a concept artist? Like by and large. Sure. It's, um, you have, um, the writer and the director who have worked up the script. Mm hmm and then you have the production designer who's going to lead the art department and take responsibility for the visual aspect of the show. So oh. vehicles, so everything visual apart from costume, costume being their own department. Oh, okay. Um, and the cost, uh, concept artist can kind of come in at any stage. Um, I tend to work with the production designer but sometimes you can work with a director or a producer, mm -hmm. depending on whether they're greenlit. And uh, they will give you an aspect of the script. Oh, cool. So a set design, a vehicle, um, kind of what, if, if, the, if the show's up and running, then it might be prop design or um, sort of anything that needs to be visualized um you can come in and, and and have a go basically oh that's cool so how much like creative freedom do you get then if it's like are they like we need a batman gun what do you got and you're like well uh, this. um you I, i've been very lucky i tend to get um quite a bit of freedom cool i think often a bit of freedom is great but too much freedom isn't yeah. necessarily <laughs> the best thing I agree. Um, I agree. The, your your first constraint is the the script and what it has to do from a story point of view. Mm -hmm. So it might have to have you know some kind of removable element or something that the actor might have to do, or the set may have to have a door, or you know, there's so the, oh, the right. script is always the first sort of point of call for kind of restricting your blue sky thinking sure um and then obviously the director has their sometimes they, they they say go nuts you know maybe they'll give you a a, a historical period or a, an artistic movement to you know stay within industrial or or you know brutalism or something like that sure um and then you either you either go very loose and sketchy or you you know you give them full color visuals depending on what they're after um i kind of been quite vague because it, every job sure and everyone you work for it's a completely different i bet you know the goalposts are always kind of moving in, in some way sure i bet that's what keeps the job interesting as well because I, so I, I, I kind of like that you can yeah. you, you get into a rhythm with someone and you, you kind of know what they want. And then the next job is, you know, the, the chips are just thrown in the air. <laughs> Got to relearn it all over again. <laughs> and you have to, you have to gain their confidence in you. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's good. I mean, I, I've never been on a job for more than um, a year, sort of 18 months. So I'm always. It's a long you know, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they can be. They, um, sometimes a, a job can be a day. Um, mm -hmm. Commercials can be a day or even half a day. Um, movies can be anything from two or three months to occasionally a year. Uh, what's great are the big budget TV shows who really? almost have movie money. Sure. They're shooting 10 hours instead of two oh. as opposed to a film. Sure. You know, things like Game of Thrones, anything you can get on uh, for a freelancer that, you know, if, if you like the work and the people you're working with, then right. you just opt out and go, I'm going to stay here for, um, you know, as long as you need me. There you go. Is, is, would, 
how common is it for like a concept artist or like a team to be freelance as opposed to like being a part of like a house? Um, film industry is apart from the VFX houses, the film industry is entirely freelance. Really? Oh, that's cool. I've, I've been, I've been freelance my entire career. Um, right on. Never had a full-time job. Um, there you go. Who needs it? Get it's out. really weird. The, my friends who have full-time jobs think I'm absolutely crazy. <laughs> uh, but I, the thought of going to a full-time job every day. Yeah. Would, would really scare me. So it's, um, I guess sure. it's what you know. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and as an artist, I mean, come on, you gotta, you gotta get out there. There's that your brain works differently. It's left brain, right brain stuff, you know? Yeah. And, and with films, um, a new film pops up and for five minutes, it's the most exciting thing. <laughs> you know. Sure. Have you heard, you know, Iron Man 8 is being made, you know, right. that's, that's yeah. really exciting for about five minutes. And then you're on the job and think, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, getting thrown into the deep end of Batman is pretty good. Mm. Usually in the industry, a lot of people's like, well, the first 15 gigs I had, you've never heard of them, but I just got a Taco Bell commercial. You're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. The dar like the Dark Knight, the Cape Crusader himself. And that was day one. Bonkers. Yeah, it was, um, uh, it, it was pretty cool. And I... Um, I don't know. I, I've been very lucky in terms of what I've worked on film and TV wise. I, I think generally concept art is needed for the bigger productions. So sure. You kind of go, you kind of go that way. Um, but yeah, it was, it was great. And we, you know, I saw, I was 23 or 24 and I was stood in the back cave um oh. in in wellington boots you know just up you know up to my knees in water because it was all it's all flooded in there yeah i still feel that kind of wide-eyed um excitement you know, it's, that's uh, i'm i work from home now because i have a young family but the mm -hmm. being at the studio being at pinewood or shefton yeah. and standing in you know these these immersive three 60 environments it's yeah it's like just magic hour for me i i i love that i i, I still do i i think you know you, you you get jaded and you know you have bad days and bad jobs and then you you go down to set and you stand there and you go oh do you know no one <laughs> no one else gets to see this and yeah when the cameras you know have finished it's going to get torn down next week you know it's going oh. to in oh. this form, when it's lit and, and dressed with all the set dressing and the monitors are all turned on, um, it's, it's up there for days, maybe two or three days. And then, you know, the camera crew moves on, the actors move on to the next set and it's just gone. And you get this yeah. kind of window to, to see something wonderful. And I still, still feel very privileged to, to see all of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's real at that point. You know what I mean? Like... <clears throat> oh, that's so cool. Especially somebody who like grew up a fan of stuff. To oh, be like, yeah. I'm in the Bat Cave. You can say that now. I mean, I was on what? Rogue One um, sort of five or six years ago, and I was in the office. And I'm I'm predominantly office based in terms of I don't go to set that much. But my a friend of mine was on set. He said, "Come down today. Come down now." And it was the the Jeddah set. And it was, that was literally kind of a 360, um, it, was out, it was outside on the back lot and it's all built up. So it's lit by natural daylight and there were, you know, all the extras, the stormtroopers, the rebel pilots, the villages, and it's just, that's better than any kind of theme park. And it was, yeah. every, the smoke, you know, all the stools kind of had the steam and yeah, it was, dude. It's it's better Very than the lucky. park because it's the actual thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? it's like these people. That's the real thing. Like this, yeah. I'm on Jetta. Yeah, bonk. What is your life, man? <laughs> well, right now, <laughs> <laughs> now is the law of equivalent exchange. You got to do all. Of, here's the other side of that coin. <laughs> I mean, I've made a, a couple of years ago. I decided to only take work I could do predominantly from home with oh, cool. the 
kids being young. Sure. Um, so um, these are, these these are my working at home uh, years. There you go. Um, but you I, go. I, un, unintentionally, I future proofed for COVID before I knew that was even going to be. There you go. There you go. Thing. <laughs> it's like Batman. Just be prepared for every eventuality. Like Boy Scouts, be prepared. <laughs> Boom. Boom. You got it. You got it. <laughs> so you went from Batman yep. to, I know you worked on uh, Doctor Who yeah, pretty yeah. early on as well. Dude, that was, that was the same year. Oh, that really? Was, yeah, that was, I, I did, I finished Batman and um, I was a massive Doctor Who fan. That was my... Yeah, that's the, your thing. The classic show. That was kind of my first, my first love. And I had heard it, it was coming back in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I made phone call after phone call. There you go. And I, I, I got through one day and I spoke to a friend of mine who I met on Batman Begins. Oh, perfect. He was a more senior concept guy. And I got through to my friend, Dan, and he said, you're going to be fine. You know, wait, just wait for the call. And um, yeah, that, that was it. That was, wow. Um, <clears throat> so at that that from from that point I was doing kind of concept art as opposed to I did make tea and coffee through my Doctor Who. <laughs> I was the youngest guy in the room. <laughs> you got to do what you know, Matt. You got to do what you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love hearing stories about like dreams come true. You know, like being a massive fan of something and then yeah. getting to work on it. It's like ah, oh, it just feels good. That was that my my things growing up. My sort of obsessions were uh, sure. Doctor Who and Star Wars, and then Fair. that evolved into Alien and uh, things like X Men. Oh, there you go. I I'm seeing a thread to, here, Matt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've managed to tick each one of those off as I. Uh, yeah, dude. I That's so I did, cool. been very lucky to work through a period. The last 10 years we've done everything i've loved growing up has been rebuilt yeah um, you know packaged and, and made again so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um pure, partly sort of coincidental and partly just lots of rabid phone calls to <laughs> <laughs> productions hey that just shows initiative you know yeah. it's like and i that's important like with the entertainment industry i find that there's talent which is important but almost more important than that slightly is drive. You know, you have to get out there and like show how much you want it. And cold calling shows that you really want it. Yeah. Like, oh man. Drive and uh, personality go a long way because I, I know Agreed. Some really great talented people and they just, they cannot communicate with other human beings. Yeah. So that ain't gonna the, work. You, you, can, you have to compromise sort of elements of your sort of work and your personality to, mm -hmm. as you know, any production is such a huge sort of machine of different people and moving parts that you, <clears throat> if you, uh, and unless you're Tom Cruise, unless you're <laughs> the top of the tree, you know, True. unless you're, you're that vital to the production, you, 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 you don't really get away with acting. Don't acting. be a dick. Yeah. Don't be, don't, <laughs> rule one. Yeah. They you just put that on a t-shirt. Don't be a dick. Yep. Would a and, dick do that? Then yeah. Then don't, don't do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna apply that to every aspect of your career, and I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's especially just the allotted amount of time you're spending with people and around like that. It's like nobody wants to work with someone uh, who's yeah. gonna be like that for uh, sixteen uh, hours a day. Or and on a film on when it's tense enough anyway, and mm -hmm. you just you have to you have to do your bit for the for the team. Yep. And I find people remember, like you said, a buddy of yours that worked on Batman worked on Doctor Who, and you're like, oh, people, it's so important. Networking's everything. Mm. It's crazy. It's crazy. So then how was that for you going from Batman, where you're running like tea and coffee, to yeah. doing art? Like, was it different than you expected? Uh, I put weights on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just because to pad I, it out. <laughs> I, I went from a summer of running around Run, literally <laughs> running or walking all day to, to sitting down through the winter and sure you had to hibernate i get it yeah um, <laughs> i'm not gonna judge was, you for it i couldn't i i couldn't believe i got to do 
what I was doing because it, yeah. it was, um, uh, I, I did, I was, I was doing sort of Photoshop and a bit of basic 3D, but I was also, I had my markers and my biros and my sort of pen and ink. Mm -hmm. So I was literally drawing in my sketchbook um, on my favorite TV show. And um, the, the first thing I, I kind of met the team and I met uh, Edward, the production designer. Uh, and I saw, I saw my friend Dan who was there and working on the TARDIS. <clears throat> and Ed, I know, I was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excuse being, me? <laughs> being 23, I thought, you know, Ray, you know, Rain, Rain yeah. Tin, I <laughs> um, But then yet, Ed gave me the dialects to, to work on and design. What? That was my first. Dude. I said, so can I do, I, just, I need to go and call my mum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> You're like, sure. I I get it. I understand. <laughs> They're cool. This is this is great though. You know, this is gonna be yeah. And I, there were days I was I was literally sort of excited to get to work in the morning and and, and do it again. It's yeah. Just a, it's a really fun fun time. Just um and to be to be involved in a show in its kind of um re-genesis period you know that it was all everything was being designed again from scratch that's kind of sure you know was there mm. like a was there a crazy amount of pressure to bring something as loved as dr who uh, i think i mean or i'm sure like, i know this ed, yeah i'm sure ed the designer felt the pressure m more than me because he i was just so pleased to be there sure um, i don't remember feeling pressure because I was just so happy. Sure. Um, Alex. <laughs> and people, you know, people like Ed, the production designer had, you know, budget. Um, and by sure. budget, I mean no budget. Yeah. <laughs> um, like their own. And that kind of stuff. And I was really green with all of that. And I just, you know, he must have gone home and just looked at spreadsheets and done you know, all, all that kind of grown up stuff where I was just, <laughs> da, 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 you know, drawing. <laughs> Living the dream over here. He also put on weight. I don't know if you noticed, but for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. you know, that first year, everyone did. <laughs> yeah, you have to. It's all, it's all part of the process. In, in, um, that was in Wales, which is sort of about an hour's drive from my house. So it was cold and wet. And Classic. And I was just, I was sat down at the desk eating sandwiches all, all day long, <laughs> but very happy, you know. But it sounds like the dream. <laughs> it was, it was a, yeah, it was a, a, an absolute joy that, that first year was, um, and it was, it was kind of a, a baptism by fire because we, we would do, they would give me set designs to do or props or, you know, Daleks, you know, whatever, whatever they needed doing. And, and it was Victorian period, futuristic. Mm -hmm. contemporary and um just a really good again a good introduction to working quickly sure um, being creative because they didn't have the money to do every, no one ever has the money to do everything they want to do but of course um, you, they had to be creative and we would design spaceship sets that we could then turn up you know move around like like lego and you know yeah. <laughs> you just you just had to so that was all um, and Ed was, you know, he was really good to me that year. He kind of became a sort of a, an unofficial mentor type. Um, oh, cool. Obi Wan. So just he was trying. I looking back, I can see the kind of lessons he was trying to teach me, and I, I didn't, I didn't realize it at the time. But he, <laughs> he was definitely trying to school me, in, you know, the because I was very green at the time. Right. <clears throat> so he, cool though yeah it was lovely it's a really lovely time i bet and then you're doing like that's good that's crazy as well that like you get different things that you're doing that's a testament to you as an artist they're like we're gonna just throw stuff at you you gotta figure it out like that's yeah i mean it's, it's a testament to me and how amazing i am at my job but <laughs> it's a testament I, to <laughs> them not having you know, enough people to, yeah. to start the I think that's, that's more the testament. It was to the lack of budget they had. That's right. But that's right. Get it to was work. a nice, yeah. <laughs> so they, they were quite long days. Um, I, was, okay. I was so happy and so excited that my sort of adrenaline just kept me going through that, that winter.
There you go. There you go. It, is it tough then? So like when you're designing things, do you have to keep in mind what the constraints are as far as like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to draw something, but it has to then become a physical thing. Yeah. So I can't do that. I can't do this. Like, how do you find that line? It's really, that's really tricky. And, um, you never want to let the constraints, um, hold you back from doing something really, really good. Sure. So you should almost, um, I think constraints are really good because they do, they force you into, um, a path and, mm -hmm. um, sometimes you'll show a drawing to a construction manager and he'll just say, <laughs> come on. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go again. And, and curves become facets, become straight lines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you have, you have to overshoot the constraints and then you have to go too far. Sure. Allow yourself to bring it back so they can see that you've done some of the, um, the less fun part of the job. Sure. Uh, the compromising. <laughs> yeah. Never show you. I mean, I, I like to run my stuff through the production designer and construction before a director will see it because the director will see it and say, yeah, that's great. And then the production design <laughs> goes, it is, isn't it great? But you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. We used to say, um, we, we would make champagne sets for lemonade money. Hey, so there you go. I learned okay. that, that, that little <laughs> phrase on the job. <laughs> That's a great one. I like that even better. I've heard, you know, hey, champ yeah. champagne taste on a beer budget. That's yeah. way better. <laughs> <laughs> you sell lemonade in a stand. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, you, you you have you have you have to kind of push what you think is possible, but equally you you have to you have to be wary of the people making it because they are gonna have to well, make it <laughs> get it off the page. Is the right. That's smart what you said, like overshoot, because it's so much easier to go too far and be reined back in than yeah. to be pushed to keep going. Well, it's like um, concept cars or high-end fashion mm -hmm. that you might see on a, on a runway and you think, uh, you know, that, I don't get it. But then by the time it gets to the high street, it's just been sort of watered down something that's kind of palatable. Sure, um, sure. I find it really good. And on Star Wars, um, I had a very good and um, close working relationship with the prop makers. Oh, perfect. Um, who, they know their job so well. And um, we just got to the point where I would give them a concept and they would say, that's, that's pretty cool. Can we pivot that barrel here? You know, they, they would just move some things around. And, and then it then it works then it's a physical thing that can exist and i would say more than nine times out of ten it looks better for them having sure. that input in the design that becomes a collaboration right and their practical knowledge um will only ever elevate the design but you sure you just have to get everyone in at the right time that makes sense it's like if you have something that isn't quite going to work when they make it, you're going to be like, look, this isn't going to work. But if we did yeah. this. Ah. Whenever I do anything with a mechanism that has to open or kind of expand in some way, normally go to a prop maker first and say, do you, do you have Smart. anything, you know, do you have a, a hinge or something that you like? And um, they'll, they'll come back and we we did a swing arm for a, a big cannon once and they, they kind of mocked it up in, in wood. And so, well, that's great. That's kind of, I'll style that now. I'll take what you have there and just style it into a Star Wars, you know, language. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's like playing with big toys. Like, oh, we can do this and make this believe. work. It's, that's exactly what it's like. Oh, that's so cool. And what a cool thing to have, like, an artist have your art literally come to life in front of you? Like, that's got to be the coolest feeling in the whole world. It, this was it in my really brain. doesn't get old. It, it's, yeah. Um, and what always sort of blew me away when it happened, when I saw it for the first time, whatever, I can't remember if it was a prop or a set or a vehicle. But 
I felt like I was giving my work to really clever people, yeah. <laughs> um, really committed, clever people who know who've been doing their job longer than I've been doing my job. And they did when they when they take it seriously and they they push it into 3D. Um, this is a very humbling and exciting experience, and um, it still doesn't get old. That one. Yeah, I bet. I bet. And like, I feel like it's also an experience that like, given how many people there are in existence, a very, very small percentage get to experience that kind of thing. <clears throat> it's really cool. Yeah, it. it's, it's quite surreal. If you've been working on a set, which sort of starts in the script, and then you visualize it here, in, you know, in your head, and then when you go to set and the thing that you visualize here is now encompassing you physically, yeah it's quite surreal sort of stepping into your own yeah i didn't even think about imagination that. environments it, if it's sort of around if it's surrounding you and i don't know it's um it's like, and you you see things and you think ah, that over there that was just a brush stroke that was something <laughs> that was like a throwaway mark sure but you're taking that really seriously and you followed that through and wow. it's either been sculpted or um, you know, and then it's been painted. It's, it's like, wow, I, I didn't, I didn't mean for that. You know, that was just a, <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but now it's huge. It's now seven yeah. foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mistake to scale. Good job. <laughs> That's nuts. So I know you went from there to, uh, you got to come back for the dark night. I did. Yeah. I, I went from being on Doctor Who thinking, well, my phone's just going to ring now. <laughs> <laughs> I better get a bigger plan because well, <laughs> I'm in yeah, it now. You start, I'm, I'm spending the money I haven't earned. And it, <laughs> it, it went a bit quiet after that because I, I had left. So I'd left film work and uh, I'd done Doctor Who for about two years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a while to get back on the film oh. uh, um, circuit. Um, but I, I, man I did manage to get back on to uh, The Dark Knight <clears throat> um, with many of the same people from Batman Begins. Right on. Um, yeah, and that was, that, was, that was nice to kind of go back in a, in a, a more senior position, having been the assistant. Yeah, come back to do, <laughs> true. Do some concept work. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was great. There you go. And arguably one of the best movies ever made. Pretty good. Oh, it's it's a really good one to be associated with. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. I read the script on my first day, and I, I, I'm not I'm not a, I so I, I like Batman. It's not it wasn't one of my childhood sure sort of mainstays. I'm very very fond of it, but it wasn't um, sort of one of the big four or five for me. Um, but I remember reading the script um, and spoilers. You know, they kill Rachel halfway through. I think. <gasps> They do what? Oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> Fair <Matt>. warning. <laughs> I mean, that, how, is that movie 10 years old? Yeah, it must uh, be. It's, a, it's 11. It came out in 2009. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I remember reading the script thinking, this is great. If they, if they make this, this is going to be really good fun. Um, mm -hmm. But I did, it wasn't a particularly long job. I think I was on it for about two months working on. There you go. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was in very. It. Very pleased to be there, and I was finally earning some better money. Sure, because uh, I, I was been treading water financially for a bit, so it was a good, um, good one to jump off. on. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was cool. I didn't really see. I don't remember that production seemed to move around a bit more. They were they did more. They shot more in Chicago. They did. They had a yeah. couple of big builds in the UK, right. uh, but I was based in the. Uh, the workshop with the bike. <clears throat> so oh, that was, sweet. Um, they put me and uh, my friend Dan, Dan Walker, who I met on Batman Begins and Doctor Who. Yeah. We had a sort of a porter cabin in the workshop and they had uh, three or four tumblers lined up. What? Three or four bikes. It's just a week. You look out oh. your window into the, into the workshop and it's like Under the back garage. The actual back cave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a yeah. crazy that's in your head. That's a memory yeah. you have. I mean, what? And the guys, because uh, I did some prop, sort of Batman, like bat belt props. They have oh, kind sweet. of delicious fox 
actual engineers and the, the prop makers, you know, to, yeah. you know, making wow. the bombs and the, the gun, you know, the, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah, it's great. I mean, those guys, and they, they, those old boys have been doing it, you know, their whole life. They've done Bond films. They've, yeah. Many of them did the Tim Burton Batman films. So, what? It's just, I love meeting, and, and that on my first job as making tea and coffee, it's like, hey, you worked on that. And you, you know. Yeah. And, you, and I, I met a, a, a very senior art director who had worked on 2001 with Sandy. Really? Hume. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Dude. So I was always, always in awe of these people, probably too yeah. much. <laughs> no such thing. Can't confirm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. I mean, that's, those are some of the unsung heroes of the industry. People that take <laughs> your idea and make it real. Oh, and it man, looks they, like they're magicians. Actually, they, so are you. They, now that I think about it, I can't draw anything. Art is magic. Yeah, yeah, I'm an absolute magician. Yeah. <laughs> those, those guys are, they're just amazing. And they, you know, they'll, they'll do Star wars gadgets and then they'll go and do, um, you know, period stuff. I mean, that's yeah. the lovely thing with film work is you, you, you kind of jump around a lot. I mean, the, the more you can jump from, you know, genres of movie, the more you can keep working. Sure, trying to be as versatile as possible. Makes sense. That's neat. Yeah. So you went from measuring the tumbler to working on the bike. Yeah, yeah, That's that was pretty, pretty cool. cool. That was pretty That's cool. That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. <laughs> making Christopher Nolan's tea to taking yeah. a meeting with him and uh, him and Nathan, the designer. Yeah, is it is it tough going from like props and sets to like vehicles? Is there like one that I'm sure they all have their own challenges? Um, you kind of. You, I mean, I, I've been doing props on Star Wars for, uh, I finished a couple of years ago, but I did about five years of just doing props. And at that point I could just sort of spin them out so quickly. Mm -hmm. that my next job was doing environments, uh, doing, you know, interiors and set design. And it really took a while to switch my head back into that um, sort of- bit. Like state of mind. Yeah, yeah, or discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, ideally, this job doesn't exist, but I'd love to do a week of props, a week of vehicles, a week of set design, oh, there a week you of go. costume, and then just do it. Rotate over them. Over again. Yeah. But when you end up doing three months of costume, you know, a year of props. So, you, mm -hmm. it always takes, I've done each one enough to be comfortable doing them. Right on. But the first couple are always a bit mm, yeah, <laughs> not, not gotta get best. back into it <laughs> let me warm up <laughs> sure sure i genuinely enjoy every the only thing i'm not particularly good at is sort of organic -y creature stuff I, i've never done enough of that sure I, I have friends who do creatures on star wars and i look at their work and think that's you've got your corner <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't come that. into mine because you'll take over <laughs> You've got your sort of niche down, but I, I, I enjoy doing all of it. It's all, all fun. That's cool. I, I met, it's weird because you like not being a physical artist myself. Mm. It's, uh, it's interesting because my brain doesn't feel like those overlap very much. Like I get props and costumes because they're things that have to be practically used and worn, yeah. but like a vehicle is a machine and an environment is an area. Like they're yeah. not the same thing at all. So to be able to do those things is pretty cool. Yeah, it's funny. You, um, I kind of see them as the same in a way, and in a sort of maybe a naive way because the, I drew everything when I was growing up. Oh yeah. Um, often when you're doing a vehicle, if it's going to be built, they'll give you a chassis. The production's probably bought Ooh, a Humvee or smart. a tractor. Strip it down, and they'll give you the wheelbase, the chassis. <clears throat> they'll say the engine block is that big, you know, go nuts. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you are, that, that's always a really good head start. It, it, sure. I think some people see that as a, a restriction, but which it is, but equally, right. it's like a, it's the, a the good white one. page isn't white anymore. You know, you've got a sure. scribble or something on there. You've got your border, but you can yeah, do whatever yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I find yeah. constraint leads to creativity. It's like, you think about like Vine, <laughs> you know, when that was a thing. It's like you have seven seconds 
figure it out. And then yeah. you get the most creative yeah. things ever because you only have seven seconds. Yeah. So yeah. starting with the chassis, that makes a lot of sense because yeah. you don't want to make a massive thing and we have a Corvette chassis. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's always good because it's like when the prop makers say, move the hinge and then we can build it. You know, give right. the chassis, then I know we can build it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the same with a, a set design. They'll, they'll give you um, a, the floor plan of the studio. Oh, cool. And the there height, you, so you have a box. Um, sure. You might, you can extend it with, with CGI, but the, what, what we're going to build has to fit in this, this box. So there I'm a go. big believer in, um, I call it gray sky thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think blue sky thinking is all well and good and fun. Yeah. But it's but not going anywhere. Yeah. Kind of drizzly gray cloud thinking, you know, give, give me some restraints, give me a budget, give me a time frame. There you go. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be 10 times more creative for you that way. Sure, sure. And it's a very UK mindset with gray skies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> original sort of cave dwelling. That's trot, right. so I'm much happier. In, That's in right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I love hearing that, like, you, you worked on Batman twice, right? And you're like, Batman, Batman's cool. Everybody loves Batman. But X-Men was your thing. So it yeah, makes me was, very happy to hear you worked on X Men, dude. I, how cool! I was, um, I, 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 you kind of when you're growing up, you have the things that are presented to you. So Doctor Who was on TV, Star Wars was around, mm -hmm. and then when you get to your teens, you start to seek stuff out a bit more. Yep. Um, so that's when I was getting into Alien and Blade Runner. The kind of the in terms of the natural progression of a nerd. Sure. Nerd, a oh, yeah. Move. I'm and, with you. Uh, I think uh, we'd have some X-Men publications, but we also had the X-Men animated TV show. Ooh, yeah. Um, so that was when I was 13, 14, 15. I, I, That's the jam. I was done. And, and from that, that led to, you know, the, the comic sort of habit um, in terms of having yeah. a drug habit through my... So mm -hmm. later teams, it was mm -hmm. so it's always making Marvel. your own money. Yeah, <laughs> um, X Men, Spider Man, that whole sort of corner of the Marvel universe. Um, so go. I can't remember when um, when that that was sort of two thousand and ten ish, I think, when um, Fox made First Class. Sounds about right. And I just done a job with the production designer um, who um, he did uh, Kick Ass. The year oh, before. Love that movie. So I, I did a couple of weeks with him, which was great. Um, he was kind of Matthew Vaughan's go to designer at the time. And um, yeah, he, he called me on sort of a Wednesday afternoon and said, uh, I've got X Men. So, <laughs> so Matt, I've got X Men. We need <laughs> that's great. And he, I said, When? He said, Like now. Can you come? Can you come now? <laughs> I can't. I can't, it's Wednesday afternoon. I can't. Right. I can't on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just throw this on me, man. I had to process. <laughs> but it was just, it was just crude, just because it was going to be made very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. we shot, uh, sort of prepped and shot and posted in under a year. It's going to be a real wow. quick, quick turnaround. Um, but that was, yeah, it was an, a joy. You know, it was. Um, um, trying to think, we did. I did some set design work, and then I moved into costume. And worked for the costume designer on the X suits and all. all really? Else. What? That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was great. And I was, I, I took a meeting with the costume designer. We were talking. I was like, blue and yellow. We got it. We, it, we you got you. It. Old it, school, it, man. I. I, I still haven't seen, because I was uh, the Jim Lee run of X-Men in the, in the 90s. That's my yeah my really traditional 90s looking X-Men. That's, mm -hmm. that's the movie I want to see. I want to yep. see them. <laughs> give me the Wolverine. You know? Give me Wolverine. <laughs> give me, you know, Cyclops with patches. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, All of it. I'm but, in. Um, but that was cool. And we got, I got to see the X-Jet. And um, what? Um, what else do we have on that movie? Again, that's in your head. Uh, Rebro and um, yeah, it was. Dude, it was great. you've seen these things. Like what? Yeah. So the X Jet. It's still you know, some weirdest, <laughs> weirdest job that. And I sat in the art department, and 
the X jet, part of the X jet fuselage went past on a big low loader. Oh. You look at it and you go, oh, there's the X jet, and you sit back down. And then you hear stomping, and there's a horde of pirates going up and down the highway <laughs> at Pinewood. And they're having pirate training for the Caribbean movie. So they're kind of going, <laughs> It's weird. What a weird day. I think I think I'm tripping out. Is any, yeah, do you yeah, guys it, see it, the pirates? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see any pirates. You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, who's your favorite X Men? Um. Yeah, that's the hard ones. I get you. Comfortable yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, it, it's someone from that '90s run. Yeah. Um. I don't want to say Wolverine because it's too obvious. I always liked Cable and Bishop. I like the Ooh. future guys. Great uh, choices. Um, kind of like Gambit, but Gambit just looks so 90s now when you go back. It's true. It's true. It doesn't hold up. <laughs> I like Forge as well. All those Ooh, kind of guys. yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. actually, no, favorite's Iceman. But traditional Iceman. There. Best powers. Yeah. Uh, That's a good choice. Nightcrawler, all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, he's just the coolest. So yeah, when they put, yeah. I mean, the opening to X2 is the best opening of any movie. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. As a kid, I was like, is that Nightcrawler? Yeah, he's yeah. trying to assassinate yeah. the president. What's happening? He looks like Nightcrawler. The tail, the, yeah. the brimstony black smoke. Um, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. You can't, for me, if you, that's why I think it's, it's great that the X Men are back in the MCU. Yeah. And those boys give you, you know, how you think they look in the comics. They, they put it on screen and make it yeah. work. Yeah. If they Agreed. just give me some 90s X-Men. Agreed. Be, Agreed. I'll fuck you up all day for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start the movement right now. We'll, do, we'll make shirts. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And when you're talking about, like, uh, people being versatile at our, as artists and being able to do like superhero movies and also period pieces and stuff like that. You worked on Les Mis, which is not at all yeah, like stuff you've yeah, worked on was, before. It's very, very brief because I knew the supervising art director and I, um, I very quickly mocked some of the, their set designs up into 3D just to work out. I think from memory, I was looking at um, how much they wanted to build versus how much they could build. Um, versus what the camera's going to actually see. So I, oh, yeah. it was only, only a week for a friend, basically, but I built the sets in 3D and just stuck a camera in there Dude. with the lens that the DOP was after just to see, you know, let them know you're going to see that much of the building. So there's sure. no need to build anymore. So, but yeah, no, I, I really enjoy contemporary and period architectural movies. They're, I, ne I never get to do them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they, those movies don't tend to need as much in terms of concept design sure just be because it exists or right you just grab it <laughs> it's easier to to visualize um but then but sometimes they do need a bit like I, I love that kind of thing yeah totally and you know wolverines and that so it works out <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> i'll give you the tick you can you can do it you worked with wolverine good job <laughs> a friend of mine very famously in my circle has got to work out with wolverine because he would there's a gym at pinewood and it's the Ooh. only gym at pinewood so Genius. that's where we, we all go in the morning sure um, and my my friend was in there working out and, and hugh jackman just came in and <laughs> what <laughs> we were in he was doing we were in there one time and he hugh jackman was doing um the eddie the eagle movie oh um, love it Love there. it. And he came in, and there was me and three of my other friends. And you've never seen three odder shaped people than me and my friends that lined up. <laughs> and my friend, who's got a very good sense of humor, kind of, you know, Hugh Jackman walks in, it's Wolverine. And yeah. <laughs> my friend said, uh, I hope we don't embarrass you today, uh, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you were very odd looking British men in the gym. <laughs> of course, of course. That's the way to go. You gotta, you gotta lay your ground. Hey, like, listen here, Wolverine. You're in the UK now. All right, I'm from here. <laughs> he, he's very well. From what I've seen, he's very friendly and seems absolutely. like the nicest dude. Took it in good humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I know you worked on one of my favorite superhero movies, Thor Two. Thor's my favorite superhero across the board, and I love Thor Two so I, much. I still haven't seen it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. 
it's right. pretty awesome. I like it a lot. Um, that was costume. That was again oh. brief, um, but it was um, some costume work um, on uh, Marvel. Have they have their core team of visual development um, mm -hmm. artists who they they kind of hit all their the main characters. But I did a bit of work for the costume designer just on sort of slightly less <laughs> important characters. But it was fun because it was. Um, I haven't, really, I haven't really done much in the way of fantasy. Um, sure. That, you know, the Lord of the Rings, Tolkien style. Sure. Um, but that, that was, yeah, that was cool. That was another, uh, quite a brief one. Mm -hmm. um, but um, What would yeah. you find is like the average length? Because you've got some really long ones and then like yeah. really short ones. It's probably about half a year, I think. Yeah. It can go. I mean, I'm on a job now. I've been on a job uh, for 18 months now. Um, wow. Might go for two years, yeah. So that, that's completely unprecedented on uh, for me anyway. <clears throat> sure. Um, I'm really enjoying it, so it's... There you go. That's, I mean, that's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> you don't want to be trudging I, I for two of, years. Of that, I'm turning away all, all kinds of other jobs because I'm quite happy to stay on this one. There you go. That's great. So about half a year. I mean, they can go to a year. Um, occasionally, people will, will ask for your sort of hour rates, and you kind of have to work out what. Sure. Uh, it, it gen I've never worked. It's generally commercials are a day, maybe a day to a week. Mm -hmm. um, but commercials have horrible quick turnaround. You know, I've had sure phone calls on a Sunday evening. You know, say we're going into a meeting at eight tomorrow morning. Can you? Do you want to work? through the night <laughs> oh sheesh <laughs> I, I did once and I, I as a much you younger learned. man I thought <laughs> that's a lot for me oh my but god that, that's quite rare you know the sure you have to be quite upfront with what you're prepared to do hour wise because otherwise sure you know, there's only can. so many in a day <laughs> yeah quite <laughs> so, so then what was it like getting a call to work on star wars because um it's the, i made it's the big one i made the call <laughs> dude, dude <laughs> that was, get it <laughs> I, I was i i found out it was coming to the uk um because mm -hmm. i heard disney had bought star wars and they wanted to make loads of them so well that's great as a as a punter i can't wait to go and see them <laughs> and then slowly the news kind of trickled down they were going to come to the uk and the kind of the key thing for me was uh, I had just worked on Edge of Tomorrow with... Oh, love that movie. Yeah, what a great I film. I love it that, so much. That no one went to see. Ridiculous. Um, one of the uh, most underrated ones of the last decade. An original, sure. you know, IP, original concept. Um, we're all hankering for, for new movies and no one went to see it. Yeah, ridiculous. But I, I'd done that and I had a fantastic time with them, uh, with an art director called Neil Lamont. Um, he had supervised that show. Um, and he had also supervised all the Potter films. So he was kind Ooh. of a, a trusted hand for handling big franchise type movies. Sure. Um, and I think he knew Kathleen Kennedy through War Horse, which he had done. Makes um, sense. Anyway, Neil was going to do Star Wars and I was like, well, Where's my iPhone? I'm gonna... <laughs> I need to speak with you for a moment. <laughs> but he knew it was very, very generous. He took my call. Um, he said, prepare a portfolio. I, you know, I'm, I'm in and out of meetings. And um, it, it was, I, I went after the job, but it was very good timing because Neil was on board and he's, he's kind of firmly embedded in, in the production. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was absolutely thrilled. That was because I, I I missed the prequel tr trilogy. I was um, at university uh, from ninety nine through to two thousand and two. Yeah, so I missed the opportunity to do the, the prequels, and I was far too young and, and inexperienced. And I I kind of thought that had gone away forever. Sure. And then you know Disney thought. There's money to be made here, you know. That's we're, right. We're not that <laughs> yet. Um, That's right. So I, I was absolutely thrilled. It was um, that was kind of the, in terms of things I wanted to tick, um, 
that that was kind of the big one that was left. Got to be. That's that's the that's the one. That's the peak of the mountain. Dude, I love that you went out and got it. That's so cool. Generally, I mean, on the whole, now I get offered jobs. Um, the first five, ten years, I had to go after everything. But then every sure. every now and again, there's the one you want to do. And mm-hmm. um, I also I, I will take for my portfolio or produce something relevant to the production to make sure um, it's kind of you know. I'm going to be a good fit on on that movie. Sure. You kind of get yourself presentable almost. You're like, hey, yeah. you, you're going to need something like this. Check it out. It's that look, it's preparation yeah. meets opportunity thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. I always, always prep. You know, it, it, generally, now I get the call and they either they either know me or it, the, nine times out of ten, it's someone I've worked for before. Sure. Or they found my website, but they know what I, I can do and where I'm strong. Mm-hmm. But if it's something I really want to do, then I will. I'll do a couple of extra pieces of you know portfolio work to make there sure we. There you go. You you got if if you want it, then you ha- you just have to go and get it. And I think so too. Uh, and you 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 have to take no for an answer, and then ruminate for a bit, and then try again in a couple <laughs> of weeks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, it's a real. I'm sure you you've had the same thing. It's a real fine line between being a pain. And hassling them, oh yeah, at, but equally not falling off their radar and mm-hmm. making a, a a bit of a you know an impression. You know, come back in a couple of weeks and just try again. Yeah, it's 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 such a game. You guys are like I don't want to annoy you, but also I know for a fact you forgot about me. So yeah. hold on, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, and if, if you can meet them in person as well, that's so much better than agreed. You know, a phone call is better than an email, and you know, f- shaking hands when we used to do that, and, and yeah. seeing someone. Um, yeah. You can ju- you can just yeah, and you can also see if you're going to fit in. You know, see see if you want to work with them because sometimes you might meet people and you think, yeah, do you know what I I know I know where this is going to go, and you, sure. you don't say that, right? But, yeah. <laughs> Typically, <laughs> you, you kind of hear. You know, the, they're going to work you hard or, you know, there's not, you know, they're, they're going to overwork you. There's some chemically, you're not going to be. Uh, right. A match. And sure. It's like completely you know, yeah, personalities. Take that, you take that really personally when you're younger and when mm-hmm. you get older, you think it's nothing personal. It's just, it's just not, you know, I'm, I know people that's going to, that are going to be better for that job and you should, you should call them because they'll, they will, you know, boss that job for you where I, I will muddle it slightly. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, conflicting personalities is a thing. When you're mm-hmm. just not operating on the right level. Like, you know, there's, it's real famous, like George Lucas, when he would cast people, mm-hmm. he a lot of times wouldn't do a casting call. He'd just have lunch with you and then yeah, just talk yeah. about whatever. And then when you leave, you get a call. Hey, you got the part. Right. It's wanting it's, to work with someone. I, yeah. I tend to have... Um, on the whole, good experiences. Every now and again, every couple of years, you just have one where it just doesn't work for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. You don't gel with the production, or um, sometimes you might work for a production designer whose regular team aren't available, so he's trying new people, mm-hmm. and you just don't work the same way that his favorite, you know, guy sure. works. And you can just feel it going south. You know, you just feel it. Yeah. Being, you're going to fire me sometime <laughs> any day now. And often it's the best thing to happen is just to get fired because it, if you're, yeah. if you're forcing round pegs into square holes, that it, it's, um, mm-hmm. it just becomes really painful. And, um, the older you get and the more you do, you just, it's nothing personal. It's just, you know, it's just, just not business. for you. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, that's really cool, though, that you got... Because you've worked on all the new Star Wars movies, right? You did I, 79, Rogue One, and Solo. I managed to do all, all five, yeah. That was, yeah. I got into a really good thing. So I started in the, the art department, and then they sort of loaned me to the prop master. There you go. There Jamie you go. Wilkinson. And Jamie said, oh, we need um, I don't know, we need some Stormtrooper blasters and Rebel blasters. You know, I think we're going to borrow you for a week. And I stayed for five years <laughs> just working with Jamie. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, there you go. And Jamie oversaw the props on every every movie. So we, I just I'd finish one, have a couple of months off, and then you know he'd start sending me you know pages or you know descriptions of what he needed. So it was um, yeah, and and we we got really good as a team because we just we got to the point where we could just design these things in our sleep because we knew sure Italian, you knew the formula the star wars language yeah sure that's cool yeah. it's like it's, get your ideas he goes makes them you're like the <laughs> team there you go and it's also i like doctor who i didn't have to do any research i because i know that universe sure I, I, i'm working on halo at the moment Love and it. i don't know halo at all in fact i've always had a playstation as opposed to an xbox so same day one on halo i was like <laughs> I need I need to learn everything about Halo because sure. I know I know, enough, I know the kind of the iconic you know the Master Chief and mm -hmm. you know the the Warthogs all those kind of big mainstays but sure uh, Star Wars I I please <laughs> I know like the back of my hand sure close your eyes you're on the Falcon yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in our case you open them and you're still on the falcon oh my god that's so cool <laughs> we used to have our sandwiches in there because it would oh my god. it was standing you know it was a standing set for sure the only one we didn't build a falcon on was uh rogue one sure sure yeah the what movie had some iteration of of the falcon in was... your life matt your life you're sandwiches on the falcon <laughs> Around the chessboard, I just I, I go I go down at lunch and you flash your pass and you get in, and it's just there and it's no one's in there. And you think well, why aren't you know why isn't why everyone here all, all day long? <laughs> yeah, so you go up the ramp and that was a very surreal going in there because it I bet it's like somewhere like Times Square or somewhere you know, but I've never been to. Sure. Um, you know, you, you, you've seen it in media and film and TV. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the Falcon, I knew it inside out. And I knew the cockpits over there, the chess tables around there, the gun yeah. turrets. But you've never been there. So when you get to go there, it's, it's, it's like stepping into a dream because it's almost like deja vu because you, you know it, but you've never physically uh, sort of played hollow chess. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Dude, that's like, uh, I think Kevin Smith talked about his experience walking up the Falcon and like every step he was like de-aging 10 years. And I was like, by the time I got up, I was a kid again. I was like, yeah. oh, and he's like crying. I was like, I would do the exact same thing. 100%. It was yep. just, just beautiful. Broken down and, and lit, you know, really well. Um, sure. Yeah, it's, it's the great. Falcon. It's not like, <laughs> it's, an, it's a, a version of it. It's like, no, that's the actual Millennium Falcon. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. real. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, Rogue One was a really good one for that kind of thing because they had lots of legacy sets like yeah. Death Star, mm -hmm. uh, Yavin. Yeah. Oh, Yavin. The Rebel Base. With, with, with X-Wings and... Oh, my God. Yeah, droids everywhere. That Dude. Was, that was a drive up to a place called Cardington, mm -hmm. which is an aircraft hangar. Oh, sweet. Um, because they, they, that set was too big to do at Pinewood, so um, they they went to Cardington. I think Cardington's where they did the original Yavin for A New Hope as well. Oh, it's so cool! I think that was up there. Yeah. What? Dude, was it was it difficult being that you're doing like a lot of the props and blasters and things like that, trying to make it new but also old? Because you got like um, the Sterling versus like the new stormtrooper blasters it's like yeah. listen, but it's it's different you know like where's was it hard finding that line um yeah it was really hard actually because we um i don't think we we really hit our stride until rogue one because mm -hmm. rogue one we had to really entrench ourselves in the traditional 1970s version of star wars sure because it um, leads right into it yeah because there's, there's, the, there's a, an armor armorer um that supplied all the guns to the, for the original movie called Bacti. Um, and they had, they had uh, Sterling machine guns, which they um, sort of That's what modified they used, yeah. into Stormtrooper. And the guy who did that still works at Bacti. 
Oh, sweet. <laughs> so we went, we went there for Rogue One. Uh, Jamie goes there all the time for work and they've got Second World War cannons and um, Lewis guns and he, he got the Sterling off and went, well, you know, we did this and this and this and that's how you make a, a, a traditional Stormtrooper rifle. So yeah. for Rogue One, we just went, you know, uh, a Luger, a Mauser, you know, we, we just, yep. we literally, I, I sound like a gun nut, but I, I, I had to, I learned about Second World War firearms, you know, that was yeah, you had to. Uh, the, the way to do it. So we, uh, and then you find out that um, Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber was a, a stick grenade. Yep. Um, yep. You know, there's all kind. it's all. Just repurposed parts. I think the combination of having it made in the UK af, post Second World War, that's where certain you know, the like Han Solo's gun, the Stormtrooper yep. guns. It's, had it been made in any other country, they would have had different things to go to. <clears throat> oh, but good point. Yeah. Being made here post Second World War, they, we had piles of Stirlings, <laughs> Mausers. Uh, the Stormtroopers are carrying Lewis guns on mm -hmm. um, Tatooine yep. um, with very little dressing as well, often. Sure, sure. But what do you think about the Skywalker lightsaber is just a graphics flash with like some windshield best wipers story. on it? <laughs> the best story. Like, what? Uh, Roger Christian, the art director, literally went to a camera shop and they came, they, they produced, he said, have you got, I need to make a laser sword. And they, they kind of, <laughs> here's a box of junk. And he, he found the, the, the flash handle, the graphlex. And insane. And if you look, I, I, I gave a lecture on this kind of thing recently where oh, cool. if, you, if you look at the Ralph Macquarie did some concept art for the lightsaber mm -hmm. and had they had the time and the money and the people, they would have built it. Um, but they didn't. So they had, they had these restrictions of time and money and they came up with something infinitely better Yep. in, you know, in a box of junk. And because this gra this flash handle has been engineered to do a job, it, it already looks like it has purpose. You don't know what those plugs are for, That's what the true. switch, but it's engineered. And that was, when I was a kid, I didn't, I had no idea it was a flash handle. No. But I knew it did something and it had a real purpose. Um, sure. And I think that's part of the key with kind of Star Wars props is like the, the Stormtrooper guns. They, they're engineered and stuff, you know, there's pins and there's an ammo uh, kind of, ejection port and all these things which i didn't know what they did when i was a kid sure it's, it's engineered tech and you kind of go you just accept it at, at face value right that's a smart that's actually a genius mindset that like when you're making props it's like this also has to do something otherwise yeah. you've just got like a stagnant piece and you can tell yeah. you're like that just yeah. doesn't i don't know but that's a button that button does something i don't know yeah, what it is yeah. but there's a button there you know or the, I, I, someone, someone cleverer than you, a, a proper engineer has done, yeah. has done that for a reason and, and tooled out, you know, that aluminium kind of corner and done. Yep. So it, it, it's kind of this language that suggests it's doing something, but you, you don't know or, or care. Sure. <laughs> when you're a kid, you just go, that's cool. You know? Yeah. That's really all you need. The same, the same with Luke's uh, binoculars from A New Hope. Um, yep. Bonkers. So we, I think by the time we did Rogue One, we were fully entrenched in that mindset of um, go and find something cool, go and find something 70s or Second World War there you and go. modify it. And that, that just became the, the mantra. That's cool. So Rogue One kind of helped inform the future movies of like, oh, let's back to one Star Wars. Yeah. Figure. Okay, that makes sense. I, I kind of wish we, we had done, I think... I kind of feel like I wish we'd done Rogue One first. Obviously, we couldn't have. Right. Um, because I, I was definitely finding my feet. And all, all this kind of accumulated knowledge of Star Wars props came over five years. I, I didn't have it from day one. So, it, sure. Yeah. Um, I think everything we did turned out great, but I just would have. Right. Would, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if we were to do it again. Sure. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. I, I was just talking with someone the other day. I think Rogue One is a masterpiece. 
Like I, I think it's a perfect movie. Not just Star Wars. Just I think it's a perfect movie. But Star Wars, it's a perfect movie on top of a perfect movie. Yeah, and I think I, I think it so it's much. definitely the best looking of the five new ones. I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, Doug Chang and Neil Lamont were the co-production designers, and um, it shows. <laughs> it just it just looks. That's how I that in, in my head. That's how Star Wars needs to look. I agree. I agree. Was there was there any prop having worked on Star Wars for a while now? Is there any prop or vehicle or set design that took you the longest? Like you just had to crack it for a while? Uh, there's always one on every movie, every yeah. Star Wars movie. And Jamie, <laughs> Jamie knows he'll say this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> and we normally start it. And we don't finish it until the end of the job. <laughs> you know, there's always like a, an evolving. Um, the on solo, <clears throat> the coaxium. Ooh, the vial. The the vials of di- and and it come it comes in this big, this big. It comes in a trunk. Oh um, yeah. That was that was just a, a rolling design. All the way through. <laughs> and what was going to go inside? Was that going to be a physical thing? Oh yeah, um, a CGI thing. Um, the, that coaxium took. <laughs> I I have a hundred visuals at various stages just on that one. Wow. Oh, yeah, that one ran and ran and ran. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that keeps you up at night. You close your eyes, coaxium. <laughs> the, the coaxium gave me nightmares for about. <laughs> Yeah, I can um, see that. I've never, and it's not even, it's not a sort of a super, I mean, it's important in that story, but it's not like Ray's lightsaber or... Right. It's not, you know, no one's going to be talking about how iconic the coaxium was in... That's true. ...in, in 15 years' time. <laughs> um, That's true. That's true. Funny, those kind of things people get hung up on more, I'd say. The sure. Minor background type props. Sure. Sure. And you, you worked on Leia's lightsaber, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's, um, no, that, that's talk about that, pressure. That, um, again, I kind of ran into that with just wide eyed excitement. Um, yeah. but it, that, that's a perfect example of about seven, I don't know, five, at least five people sort of working towards the same goal prop makers will have a go, they'll give it to me, I'll work it up, send it back to them. Um, that was a real team effort, that one. Yeah. Um, JJ had a lamp he really liked, or he had some reference of an Art Deco lamp, which had kind of a ringed detail. Oh, yeah. Cool. So whenever Jamie hears, you know, oh, JJ, like, you know, we've got JJ like that, that's kind of our, our way in. Because mm-hmm. um, you kind of, if you can show a client or a director, the reference they like with the prop, then sure, you know, there's synergy and they, they feel emotionally like they have their thumbprints on there. Gotcha. You know, that makes sense. A, we listened and, yeah. we this. <laughs> and hopefully there's then the they're thing. connected to it emotionally. So there's, you're sort of playing that kind of mad men style. Sure. Idea to them. Um, but yeah, that, it, it's it's an absolute stunning prop. I I worked with um, three or four different prop. Oh, well, there's one one prop maker in particular who we went back and forth with, um, a guy called Keith, and he he styled that thing and he put extra bevels and it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, just, I love um, it. I didn't I didn't like the I didn't. It wasn't my favorite design on paper. Sure, but Keith. He in, in he styled that thing in, in in 3D physically. It was absolutely beautiful. I agree. It's one of those things like you imagine as a kid. You're like, oh, what would Leia's lightsaber look like? And like the, the just the the weight of designing a prop like that, and then you know, with Carrie Fisher and everything that happened, it's like, all oh, right, this is for the future of forever. This is Princess Leia's lightsaber. Like, yeah. it's like there's it's- an unintentional emotional weight that the audience will have with that. I held on um, to do the, um, the third, um, to do Rise of Skywalker. I came back to do that one because I hadn't done a lightsaber yet. 
Oh, there you go. I, I've done, I've done, I've done blasters. I've done stuff for Luke. You know, I, done, I ticked all these boxes, and I, I hadn't done a lightsaber, and we we got to do three in that cool. movie. We did layers. We did the dark ray. Um, oh, cool! The one. flick out one. I've held that prop before, not the actual one, but they did a replica thing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I want to get hold of one of those. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> So I, 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 I did that movie to do lightsabers because I, I'd done all these go. Star Wars movies and I hadn't done a, a saber. So, you, you know, you, you had to come back. You got to do lightsabers, I mean, man. I really did at that point. <laughs> yeah. So you did Dark Ray. You did Rays at the end, I imagine. Yeah, that was Jamie always wanted that to be part of the staff or to be yeah. constructed from the staff. He makes sense. He, he sold it to JJ and he said, you know, that's. That's what she's had throughout these movies. Um, I don't think anyone thought that, that staff would become so iconic. Um, right. And, you know, it was on the marketing. So mm-hmm. we, we, we kind of broke a staff down, repositioned it to kind of find, you know, you know the, the, the best configuration. Sure. Um, we wanted, we've been trying to do a petaling, sort of like an afterburner style opening mechanism. We've been trying to get that in there since uh the kylo ren saber so we there's a cog on rays which kind of turns and then it would petal open and close yeah that's pretty cool it's pretty cool designing lightsabers man you did that and you did you did luke's compass too was that yeah 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 yeah. dude you're knocking them out i did that like that that one that was a real um i i had (laughs) finished on that movie and my my son had just been born so i was kind of having some paternity leave yeah and they the crew were in ireland mm-hmm. and um that compass came up i don't i don't know if it was going to be a bigger thing but it, it was quite an important prop um it, it, it was in the battlefront uh video game as well yeah. oh yeah which i don't know if it was kind of a cross media thing but it was it, that that prop was literally. I did. I think Saturday morning. I did a couple of hours just to hash it out. Mm-hmm. The prop makers had. I literally got it signed off. It went to Ryan in Ireland. He said, "Yeah, go." Prop makers had twenty four hours to fit. As soon as as it went from me to Ireland, approved by Ryan. Back to the UK, the prop makers just went go. They made it, they shipped it to Ireland, and then it was on camera on Monday morning. It was. What? It's not nor that doesn't normally happen. No, especially that for a hero is, prop that's like getting close screen time. Yeah, I think it, I don't. I, I think it was going to have more. I don't know. Uh, there was weight. The you know it was an important thing to do. Sure. Um, but it's it's rare that we get that kind of. Um, time pressure but that was a oh a toughie yeah <laughs> well, I, say tough, I mean it's not that tough for me i mean it's fun i'm drawing at home where the sure. are. i mean they they step up you know that yeah they're working wow. in a tin hut you know through the night yeah that's that, that's important to, that just shows how important it is to have the right people on your team yeah yeah that yeah. can, um, that can do that it's it's really humbling so you know we we all moan about working conditions but I can't, you know, I'm drawing in, in my studio. Yeah. It's fine. You, sure. know. you want me to draw it again? It's fine. That's another day's work. I, you know, it's, it's totally cool. Sure. There's way worse yeah. ways to make a living. It's fine. You know, it drives me nuts. I mean, there are, you know, you do get into bad working conditions, but on of the course. whole. Yeah. It's not that bad, you know. It's, <laughs> Could always be worse. Could always be worse. Yeah. <laughs> Do you then looking back on, I mean, because God, Edge of Tomorrow is so good. We got Edge of Tomorrow, you got X-Men, you got Batman, you got Star Wars. Do you have like some favorite things that you've designed where you're like, this is these these are my these are my babies? Um, Ray's gun, Ray's blaster. Ooh. Um, love that. A gift from Han Solo. Do you know what? We didn't you, I don't know if that was a later edition. We didn't know. We designed a whole bunch of pistols for that movie, and I think JJ just allotted designs to different characters. 
so I did that design. I knew it got approved, but I, did, I didn't know, I didn't entirely know if it was going to be for Ray. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the movie and then Han Solo gives it to Ray. Yes. <laughs> you like that that's that's my plaster <laughs> uh, that so that's i'm very very fond of that one that's that's a um, great choice i have the only thing i've ever really been given or managed to take from set is i, I did a prop ask. for doctor who for season one um yeah it's a, a blaster for captain jack I, um, what yeah yeah from uh torchwood yeah yeah, yeah 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 it was um and um the edward the designer gave it to me when i finished because he knew so i sort of fought my corner for a, a finish or you know how it should look with one of the art directors and he, he he was kind of mentoring me and teaching me to kind of stand up you know for you know for if you believe in a design i uh, kind of that prop sort of represents that lesson he taught me and oh, um cool. Yeah, so right on. that's quite uh, uh, and the Dalek as well. That's my oh, um, how can you not? Yeah, when we went, uh, that's kind of my first proper sit down concept job, and I was working on the Daleks. And we went to the location the day they delivered the prop, Ooh. and that was in a it was under a, a sports stadium, which is kind of brutalist concrete corridor <clears throat> and we were going down and then they we didn't know they were testing the dalek um and it came around the corner with the lights on <laughs> it's, it's seeing it in its natural environment seeing it on location um yeah and that's kind of one of my <laughs> terrifying yeah. <laughs> it's like a part of you as a kid that just wants to scream be like you can't i can't keep it in <laughs> my first reaction was to run so it's like yeah, it's gotta be. It's, it's, i know this is <laughs> but it's it, just seeing it not in a workshop, seeing it on a location yeah. you know, in, a, in a dank concrete corridor. It's just, yeah, wonderful. I think it's funny that of everything I've done, that's the, the thing that comes back to me. And that's the, the thing people ask. Really? That's even, cool. Even now, yeah. Dude, you're doing it. What, so, as someone who's done it for a long time then, what is some advice that you would give to somebody who wants to get into like concept art and prop costume everything you're doing yeah yeah i'd say um i don't expect it to happen overnight Ooh, good one. and that's absolutely fine if it doesn't mm -hmm. um um i you these are all super cliche obvious things but you you have to treat everyone with respect and be be polite and be humble um you have to strike a it's a really tricky balance between being humble and not being swallowed up by the machine that is the, the movie that you're working on. Because if you're too humble and too quiet, then you, you just fall into the doing, you know, the, the, the making the tea and coffee or not progressing. Sure. So you do, you have to be a bit, a little bit bullshit and a bit confident, which these are all sort of lessons I've, I've learned. Yeah. You know, going, you, you don't have that knowledge. You don't, People can tell you to be confident when you're younger, but you don't, I don't think you fully appreciate or understand that until you get a bit. A sure. Bit um, and just, I mean, f try and find the corner of the film industry or concept design that you really enjoy doing, um, which might be costume or creature, um, because you're gonna have to do it a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky, you're going to have to do it a lot every day. Um, so, I, I, when you get there, you know it's a gift, you know, to do something you enjoy. Sure. Um, right on. Yeah. What what software and like equipment are you using these days? Uh, I um, standard Photoshop, as everyone else, for any kind of painting mm -hmm. or illustration. Uh, I use a package called Modo. Cool. For 3D and rendering. Um, I hear Blender is really good. I keep, if I didn't have a full time job and a family and kids, um, <laughs> I'd learn Blender. Sure. It's just not going to happen. I, Fair. Uh, it's if I'm not working, I'm with the kids. You know, it's. Um, there you go. 
right on, right on. It's important to know those things as well. You don't want to be like, yeah. I can draw, but also industry standard. <laughs> I, a blender looks really, really good for 3D. That's kind of, I think. I've heard good things. <clears throat> good things. And it's free as well. It's that's, remarkable. That's the best part. <laughs> Modo, Modo is my kind of 3D render and, um, you know, texturing software. Sure, sure. I'm into it. Well, dude, look at that. We've been talking for over an hour and a half. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm about to switch over into my, my dad uh, responsibility. Yep, yep. <laughs> dude, this was so fun. I'm so glad we made this happen. I appreciate you hanging out with me. No, that's been good fun. It's nice to um, sort of walk back through the, the different jobs. Yeah, yeah. And you make amazing stuff. And I'm really excited to see what you're doing next. But before I let you go, I have to ask, uh, where can people find you online, your amazing portfolio? Oh, do you know, I'm gonna have to. I, I knew you'd ask and I, I didn't prepare. <laughs> I, I did. I did nothing to prepare. Good. Um, that's, what I, that's what I like. Aren't you comfortable <laughs> so I can come at you with the questions you're not expecting? <laughs> uh, Instagram is my main sort of platform at the moment. Yep. And I'm uh, matsav.concept on there. Love it. And my out-of-date website, which is about <laughs> to be updated, it's really Beautiful. Really is uh, matsavconcept.com. Boom. Get that SEO. I'm yeah, 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 do. And if, if you check it out, if you click in a couple of weeks, I should have a brand spanking new one. Up Ooh, on. I'm excited. Working. It was my COVID project that I didn't finish. There you go. <laughs> we all have those now. <laughs> I love yeah, it. I, I, love I appreciate it. the plug, of course. Of course. Of course. I'm here for you. That's what I do. <laughs> and... Bye. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.